Okay, so welcome to section 7.2, where in this section we're going to specifically uh, discuss estimating a population proportion with um, estimating population proportion with confidence intervals. So we talked about this briefly in the last section that in order to create a confidence interval, you're going to have to check your conditions. This will be the same conditions that you had to check for proportions back in unit six. Um, we're going to determine critical values, and we're going to construct and interpret confidence intervals, and we're going to determine a sample size needed to obtain a confidence interval with a specified margin of error. So we're basically taking what we learned in the long section in section 7.1 and applying it specifically to um, population proportions. All right, so um, if you could take a minute and um, try to do this, this would be um, awesome. You can do it with a bunch of cards. So your teacher has a container full of different colored beads. Your goal is to estimate the actual proportion of red beads in the container. So think about forming groups of three or four students. You're going to determine how to use a cup to get a simple random sample of beads from the container. Each team is going to collect one simple random sample of beads, and we're going to determine a point estimate for the unknown population proportion. So the teacher has a container full of colored beads, but you don't know the actual proportion of red beads in the container. We're using this experiment to see if we can figure out what the actual proportion of red beads is in the container. After you do this, you're going to find a 95% confidence interval for the parameter P, or the population proportion of red beads in the container. Um, when you do this, you'd be considering any conditions that you're required for the methods that you use, and you would compare your results with the other teams in the class. So I just want you to think about this for a second if you were to do this. Um, if you had a bunch of teams of three or four students, would all of the teams get the same proportion? How could we use the proportion of red beads that each of the team got in order to estimate the population proportion? Um, and what does a 95% confidence interval actually mean in this case to estimate the population proportion of red beads in the container? Okay, so we're, we're going to be sort of going through this section and answering those questions. So in this section, we'll be discussing how to estimate the proportion of some outcome of the population. So we're going to assume that we don't know what the population proportion is. So here's some examples of proportions that people might, you know, want to investigate, statisticians, whatever. What proportion of U.S. adults are unemployed right now? Now, so they're constantly taking a look at the unemployment rate. Um, you hear about it a lot on the news, but the, it's only an estimate. They don't go through and find out every single solitary person that's unemployed. They use some sort of method to estimate the unemployed. What proportion of high school students have cheated on a test? What proportion of the U.S. teenagers own a smartphone? What proportion of Mac computer computer batteries last as long as Apple claims. I would say that for iPhones. My iPhone battery is always dying. What is the sum of the information? So what can we use from our previous units in order to construct a confidence interval for a population proportion? All right, so we already discussed exactly what confidence intervals are. So how can we specifically apply that to proportions? Now, number one, we know that with proportions, we're always, you're always using a normal curve because remember, so proportions have a, by, are similar to binomial distribution and proportions can be approximately normally distributed if we have specific conditions that are met, okay? So when we construct a confidence interval for proportions, we are going to call it a Z confidence interval for proportions. Why a Z? A Z says we're using critical Z scores, we're using the normal curve in order to calculate the confidence interval. All right, so number one, when we create a confidence interval, we always want to identify the population of interest in the parameter we want to draw a conclusion about. So in our red cup example, our population of interest would be the population of red beads in the, um, the population proportion of red beads in the cup that the teacher had, okay? Now, when this says choose an appropriate infant's procedure, what that means in this case, basically we have one sample, we're taking a sample, each of those students had taken a sample, and they're each gonna create a Z confidence interval for proportions, okay? We're gonna get into how to name that later, but that's just a general idea, okay? 
we said before that you have to check the conditions because the confidence intervals are based on the normal curve. So in the previous questions or the previous unit, when we discussed proportions, we said three conditions had to be met. Number one, it had to be a simple random sample. Make sure that's in context of the problem. So simple random sample of four beads or whatever you took. Okay, the 10% condition, population has to be 10 times the sample size in order to use the standard deviation. Now, remember with proportions, in order to tell that it's approximately normally distributed, you have to do n p hat greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p hat. Now, in the previous sections, you were using n p, not p hat. In this case, why are we using p hat? We don't have the population proportion, so we want to check to make sure our sample is large enough to be approximately normally distributed. So just keep in mind that now we're using p hat because we don't have the population proportion. That's the whole point of confidence intervals is we don't know the population proportion so we are using our sample to estimate it. We make sure you show your work with the numbers plugged into the confidence interval and then interpret your results in context of the problem. Basically this means to interpret the confidence interval every single solitary time and the level if it's asked for. Okay, so what's important about constructing a confidence interval? Number one, make sure that your simple random sample, your interpretations are all in context, okay? Because we're, when you construct it, you're specifically talking about one, one specific problem. Make sure that you show your numbers plugged into the large counts condition. That's your NP hat greater than 10, okay? And then, um, and also showing that your population is 10 times the sample size, so showing that, you know, 4 times 10 equals 40, there's more than 40 beads. Show your numbers plugged into the confidence formula and make sure your sentences are well constructed, legible, and easy to understand. Okay, now, with constructing a confidence interval, what happens if one of the conditions is violated? So what happens if not, if it's not a simple random sample? That means that the data is from a Comp or a convenient sample or a poorly designed experiment and there's really no point in constructing a confidence interval because it's not really going to give us a good representation of the population. Just remember in order to make inference about the population you have to have a simple random sample. When we don't this limits our ability to make any inference beyond the data that we actually have. Okay so without a simple with a if you don't have a simple random sample we can only make conclusions about the specific data that we have not about the population and there's really no point okay so you can say like if, if that happens you would basically want to say like this data is pointless even though I'm constructing my confidence interval um, and you'd want to make sure to state it's not a simple random sample what happens if the population is not more than 10 times the sample size that means that the standard deviation can't be used all right the formula will give a value that's too large all right because the standard deviation each of the um, values aren't independent. So if many 95% confidence intervals were created, more than 95% would, per would capture the true population. So basically this is false advertising and we can't really proceed. Okay, so you can state like population is not more than 10 times the sample size, we can't proceed. What happens if n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat are not greater than 10? So this is the approximately normal condition. Um, if this condition is violated, the capture rate will be lower than the one advertised by the confidence level if the method is used many, many times. So basically that means if this is not greater than 10, then if there was a 95% confidence interval, it's probably only going to capture the true population 90% of the time, and that's false advertising. And the reason for that is it won't be approximately normally distributed, It'd either be skewed right or skewed left. Okay, so that means that we're the middle part of our data, when we do the middle part of our data, we're going to have a whole bunch of data that's actually outside the data, so it's not a true capture rate. Okay, so what exactly does a confidence interval for population proportions look like? So remember that um, the proportion, that should say proportion, the proportion of the sampling distribution of p hat is p. I lied, sorry, I just got a little confused myself, okay? So remember, if we're looking at the sampling distribution of p hat, and we have a whole bunch of p hats in a sampling distribution, then the mean of that sampling distribution is the same as the population proportion p. Okay, so if I had a whole bunch of p hats, and I took the average of all the p hats, the average of all those p hats should be the same as the population proportion. Okay, so right here, this would be 
population proportion should be the mean of the sampling distribution. Remember the standard deviation of my sampling distribution, okay, notice the symbols, just reminding you of that, is P times 1 minus P divided by N. Well, the problem in this case is now we don't have the population proportion for the mean and we don't have the proportion, population proportion for the standard deviation. But remember, we are using the sample in order to estimate the population. So since we're using the sample to estimate the population, we are going to use the sample or p hat in all of our calculations. So confidence interval proportions, the same formula that we talked about before. In this case, the statistic is going to be p hat sample proportion. The critical value, critical z-score, comes from the standard normal curve, or the normal curve, and then you have your standard deviation of the statistic. Now notice the difference, this is p hat and 1 minus p hat, not the population, because we don't know what the population proportion is. We're using the sample that we have in order to estimate the population, so we're using p hats. So all of your p's in a confidence interval for proportions are all p hats. We're using that specific sample to estimate the population. And keep in mind that all of these p hats are going to be different for every single solitary um, confidence interval that you take since we don't know the population. Okay, we use the general um, formula from section 7.1 to construct a confidence interval for the unknown population proportion p. So same formula that we took a look at before. Okay, and this is the formula from the previous page. So the sample proportion p hat is the statistic that we're using to estimate the population proportion. Making sure that the independence condition is met, we're using the same standard deviation from our sampling distribution, only we are putting a p hat in since we don't know the population proportion. We're using the sample to estimate the population. Okay, once we find our critical z-score, our confidence interval is easy to calculate. So it's just once you have your sample proportion, you find your critical z-score, plug everything in, we're good to go. Okay, so this is just your general formula once again, same thing that was on the last couple of slides, um, keeping in mind that z star is your critical value on the standard normal curve with, you know, c percent confidence interval, 95 percent confidence interval between negative z and z. And we went over on the last slides how to calculate that critical z score, but we'll be going over it again. All right, now. What I want you to notice is that the standard deviation is constructed, we've already discussed this, using p hat instead of p. This means that the standard deviation came from the sample data, not the population. So we just have a different name for that. So standard deviation is understood that that's a population standard deviation. So since this is from a sample, we just have a different name for it. We call it the standard error. All right, now I know that this is confusing because this portion right here is the standard of error where when you include the z-score, that's the whole margin of error for your confidence interval. So since we're using sample instead of population, we just call it the standard error instead of the margin of error. So when the standard deviation of a statistic is estimated from the data, so when we use a sample, the results or the standard deviation is called the standard error of the statistic. So how is it different from the margin of error? Just remember that the margin of error is everything after the plus or minus sign. So in this case, the margin of error includes the critical z-score. So standard of error is just another name for standard deviation. Okay, so how do we find the critical value for our confidence interval? Making sure that the large counts condition is met, we can use the normal curve. So that's your n p greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 10. So to find a 95% confidence interval, we use a critical value, okay, here's your critical value of z star is negative 1.96 or z star is 1.96. So you're just remembering that um, you have your probability is 95%, so this is basically where your confidence interval lies. Your z score separates like where your confidence interval is versus where it is not. So I would use your table or your graphing calculator. So you're going to do inverse norm of 0 0.025 because that's everything to the left of 0 0.025. Or you can do inverse norm of 0.975 because 0.975 is everything to the area to the left of Z. So critical Z just separates, okay, what's inside my confidence interval, what's outside my confidence interval. Okay, so we're going to use a four-step process in order to um, construct a confidence interval, and it's going to be the state, plan, do, conclude. State is going to be 
what parameter we're using, what's the name of the test we're using, basically stating what the question is asking. We're identifying the appropriate inference method, so that's basically stating the name of the test, um, one sample Z confidence interval for proportions. We're going to check the conditions that we talked about. We are going to show all of the calculations, okay, plugging in, and then we're going to interpret the interval and level in context of the problem. In the next slide, we'll get some problems.